Well, you saw it in the intro, but welcome back and thanks for joining me again. Here's the kit I wore for the upcoming game in this video. This was kind of a fun kit to put together. I did some last minute repairs to this blocker that I honestly never had an intention to use. It was just part of my collection, but I wanted to wear those pads and that led me towards that catch glove, which we're gonna have to talk about in detail, which then led me to this blocker and some game day repairs to be able to wear it. Well, before we start talking about the pads, I did wear the Cooper deflector, chest protector again, which is mid eighties. I talked about this recently. Uh, I'll put a link to that video up here and down in the description as well, in case you wanna see that because I think this is only the second time now that I've actually worn this piece. Now we'll talk about the pads, as if that wasn't obvious by the fact I'm holding them and that's the only thing on my table here. These are Cooper GP58L model pads, and these are a low level pad. They were considered the senior deluxe model, and they carried this throughout all of the 70s and most of the 80s. Based on what I know about them, this is more of a late 70s model. One of the ways I can tell on that, for starters, is the 70s models had the brown canvas sides. The earlier 70s, the two shin straps were actually more centered. There was much more gap here and here, which brought them in closer. And then in the later 70s, they moved them up and down here. So like I said, this is a lower level senior type pad. It is a leather face. It's stuffed with foam and it weighs 5.15 uh, pounds each pad, obviously. By the 80s, they had modified the uh, material on the side panels to be that kind of goldish nylon material. And they had a screened on Cooper logo. Does have a felt leg channel and leather on the uh, boot. This particular set is in pretty good shape. One nice part is the patch up here is still really nice. I have restrapped this thing with uh, the right kind of strap leather and all new buckles, which are very similar to the original buckles. Overall, this set of pads is in really good shape. There is some like water staining in the leather that I have not been able to get rid of. This is a GM6 senior set of gloves. This looks nothing like a real GM6. And that's because I modified it with a couple of important add-ons. The GM6 was, I guess what you call, uh, or what I call a solid pocket baseball type glove from the era where it did not have a T with the lace. In the eighties, Glenn Miller offered an upgrade item for Cooper gloves called a T-Web. When I saw that a couple years ago, I got a hold of Glenn and I ordered one. And so he, um, he actually made one for me. I was able to then remove the solid and put this on there. Now I did it originally just as uh, kind of an experiment because this is a lower end glove. I didn't really have intent of wearing the glove very often, if at all, ever. I have worn it a couple times. I think one other time before this. So the second modification I did to this glove is a reproduction uh, made to the same pattern Cooper Cheater that would have been on like the GM21 ST or GM12 ST gloves. So the interesting thing about these gloves and why I know these ones are from the 70s is that both of these gloves are made in Barbados. And you might think, well, that's weird. Why would a Canadian company do that? There's a long story behind it, but in the 70s, Canada and Barbados had kind of a tax advantage for manufacturers. They had worked out some arrangements and manufacturers could invest the, their companies in, in the country of Barbados and receive some type of tax credits from the country of Canada. It's too much detail to go into, but they also had a lot of tourism back and forth. You don't actually see any made in Canada on the gloves at all. 
even stamped in here, and I'm going to show a close-up, it actually says in the uh, foil stamping, Barbados, made in Barbados right on there. The cuff is vinyl. The palm of the glove is leather. There's not much more I can say about it. It is a pretty low-end uh, type of glove. I would actually rate it a step up from that GM9 I wore, the late model GM9 Durasoft. And I'll go ahead and put a link to that video up here as well in case you didn't see that. I would rather wear this than that glove on any kind of regular occasions if I had the choice. And then the blocker, very similar. This is also going to be a 70s blocker. I do believe that this is a later 70s blocker than the 70s era of this glove. And there's a couple reasons for that. I don't have 100% of the details on this, but there was a point in the mid-70s to mid late seventies where Cooper changed the color of the thread in their embroidered patches to be a blue instead of a black. I'll throw a picture in here comparing these two patches so you can see that a little better. Again, we're talking a vinyl construction glove. So even the face of it here is vinyl. The cuff is vinyl. The thumb piece is vinyl. The palm is uh, leather faced but nylon gussets and back of the fingers. I had to do a bunch of repairs to this thing, like I said, to get it out there. And really the repairs, the primary repairs were, I did a ton of stitching on this palm because it just had holes everywhere. All the fingers were opened and falling apart and there were holes in the palm and everywhere. So I just, um, intentionally I used red thread so that I'd be able to show you photos and you could see all the different repairs that I had to do to this thing. The other thing I had to do was I pulled the plastic out of here because it was dry and shattered and it was all intact. But if you just flexed the blocker a little bit, you could hear the crinkling cracking. I put an extra plastic board that I have in to replace it. Again, the glove is made in Barbados and it is stamped that way on the palm. Okay, so for the helmet, I skipped forward 10 or 15 years. Uh, Cooper SK2000 large later model and then the cage is the gl 100 large size cage and that cage was introduced in 91 i believe carried 91 92 93 and maybe 94. the 91 model was slightly different than this and then the other ones the the cage itself was pretty much the same with a couple of changes to the way the straps work over time i know it's the second version because the top bar is more of a straight line here where the first one had a bit of a dip down and a rounded end on here. Basically, they tried to turn the VL100 into a goalie cage by attaching this really cool dangler made of the same kind of metal wire and hinged, basically, cage clips there. I actually like these cages. I don't wear it enough. I only have two, I think. Well, the final piece is this Cooper Superlight GL stick with a Lie 13. Simple black and white with a straight blade. Great stick, nice and heavy, solid wood. Love the sound of the wood. I know I say that in every video, but I love the sound of the wood. Well, there we go. That was the gear for this video. Uh, the game footage is coming up next. This game didn't go in any way as I had hoped. It, it boils down to being one of those games you just wish would end soon. Anyway, if you like the video, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button. Leave some comments. Talk about the gear. If you know anybody that might have an interest in seeing this video, feel free to share it with them. And as always, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you get an alert every time I upload a video, I'd appreciate it. Thanks.
End of one, losing two to zero. Four to nothing after two. Losing.
seven to one loss. Well, that was lousy.